Hello and welcome to the Borns presentation for Power and Signal Magnetic Solutions in Battery Management Systems. My name is Kyle Moldenhauer. I'm the Product Applications Engineer for the Borns Technical Marketing Group. Today we're going to be discussing BMS systems through a brief overview and then moving into power conversion magnetics and really some of the design challenges as it pertains to safety standards and isolation requirements. And then after that, I'll show you some of the latest Borns products for low voltage isolated power and signal solutions to meet customer operation parameters. So a BMS system as a whole is really divided, uh, I guess in my mind, to you know power level circuitry for, for line drivers uh, and then signal line driver uh, segments. E for either one or both of those levels, uh, the red dotted line is depicting really the decision that the customer needs to make to uh, ask themselves where am I going to put isolation and safety into this whole BMS system. Um, so really to do that from a magnetics design perspective the transformer is typically the one that is asked to provide that isolation uh, from low voltage to high voltage side. And so to do that, um, there's safety and isolation requirements that need to be net met to um, get that done. So in order to design the transformer for the customer, we need to know some things first about it. Uh, first of which is what is your peak working voltage or really hot, typically is the highest input voltage your circuit will see uh, with including or excluding any type of a transient effects that you need to be included either for say an open circuit or closed circuit condition um, uh, secondary in, in the circuitry. Uh, depending on that state, um, your circuit may need to be considered for an over voltage category uh, which really uh, could consist of increased distance uh, needed per the standard or something like a higher pot uh, test voltage um, in the specifications. Uh, then after that we actually need the specific standard or standards that need to be met to fulfill your BMS system and this can be from a number of uh, test standard agencies, uh, IEC, UL, uh, VDE, CSA, uh, there may be others. Uh, those are the ones that we are familiar with at Borns. And then the specific level of insulation that you are uh, requiring, whether it be functional, which is really just uh, the transformer needs to operate faithfully within the you know, electronic circuitry, uh, or if it is a reinforced um, situation where you need levels of protection for the user. Uh, this is where we start talking about galvanic isolation, really protecting the user from electric shock. Uh, reinforced insulation gives three levels then uh, of protection from the user. Uh, then any other operating conditions that you may need. Uh, maybe you have uh, an altitude issue for above sea level, uh, need to meet a particular pollution degree or the dirtiness of the environment the transformer needs to operate in, or any other specific test requirements that you might need to fulfill, say a partial discharge test, or some sort of long-term reliability uh, or environmental testing that you would need in addition to meeting the standard. A uh, quick note in the bottom left part of the slide to define distances used for standards. Uh, we talk about creepage and clearance quite often. Uh, clearance being the distance between two points be, uh, in, with, with air as the only thing in between. Uh, then creepage would be the distance between those same two points but measured along the surface of, of or between those two points. A nod to topology. Um, we get questions asked to us with you know what kind of topology should we be using for BMS systems. Well we really don't want to make the decision for you as to which topology. I tried to find a, a matrix or, or give some idea with these low power BMS line driver systems as to where you may or may not want to use uh, typically the two popular topologies that we see. Uh, one being the, the types of flybacks um, that are available and then the main part of what I'll be talking about in the next few slides a push-pull type topology. So with that Borns has several um, solutions uh, for BMS. Uh, we have our new HCT line which is a push-pull uh, power line driver which can operate in uh, unregulated or regulated system. 
uh, environments and then we've got a plethora of flyback solutions uh, for transformers that way and then uh, we've got some solution for signal level as well whether it be an SPI bus or CAN bus or whatever type of methodology you're using for communication in your BMS system. So the Borns HCT line uh, is a new line driver uh, selection catalog uh, readily available on the website from us. Uh, it's got a low profile with an extremely high creepage and clearance distance built into the structure uh, greater than eight millimeters as you can see by the slide which uh, complies with some of the most stringent standards that we could find for IEC meeting reinforced insulation to a working voltage of 800 volts. The original design for the HCT line was to be coupled with the TI SN65XX line of chipsets uh, from TI. Um, and even though it was designed for TI, it can be used with any like push-pull line driver type situation from other IC manufacturers. Uh, the driver is also AECQ2 compliant, so it's automotive uh, ready and capable. Uh, while also meeting all the standard EHS requirements for ROHS and reach lead free, halogen free criteria uh, with an extended operating temperature range and meeting really any and all standards for input and output voltage and power levels that are required for the line driver chipsets um, per their application notes. So what makes the ACT unique uh, meeting these high creepage and clearance distances in a smaller package? Uh, actually, it's if you follow the red line depictions on the slide that you see, it's really in the design of the header around the internal core and, and windings to the pins on the outside of the, of the header. Uh, so we have a unique, uh, we call it a lid uh, and an enclosure uh, around the core and coil that extends that creepage and clearance path uh, as opposed to just the distance between the two pins, which is the purple line that you see in the slide. So in effect, um, the type of header is not the gating factor anymore for meeting creepage and clearance limits. It's really the pin spacing, that purple line. So for example, we, if we would want to uh, meet a 10 millimeter creepage and clearance distance, we would simply choose to extend the header a little bit and to increase the distance between the uh, two sets of pins that you see in the slide in front of you. A little bit about push-pull timing. Um, this is the nod to the unregulated and regulated portion of the, really to the TI chipset. Uh, and that the uh, alternating switching of the FET, uh, you can see with, with points A and B in the slide, uh, really you get, it, you get out what you put back in again. So at point C, you actually have an unregulated um, operation. So it's really simply, it could be a one-to-one -one or some type of voltage conversion uh, from A and B to C. But uh, really it's to point out that there is no type of uh, output to bring it up to a DC level with ripple. So to be able to do that in a regulated type driver situation, you would simply add an LDO or maybe a small output inductor uh, to really get to a, a true DC voltage with ripple output from the push-pull driver itself. Flyback applications. Uh, we have a plethora of these, um, either in a catalog form or either custom designed through Borns, uh, meeting really uh, any and all types of, of flyback topologies that are out there, you know, quasi-resonant if you have an op couple feedback, uh, which is a little bit older style of flyback, or these new ones that I chose to, to show, which are a simple, what they call a primary sense wind type driver. So it's a single chipset, one transformer, with a very reduced uh, component co count, depending on how many isolated outputs you're looking for. Um, and you can see on the left in, in green, you know, Texas Instruments have kind of coined phrases that they uh, have, have put with these. Fly buck from TI, uh, ISO buck from Maxim, uh, analog devices called MicroPower. Um, so these are all really uh, simplified flyback uh, line driver type applications for use in BMS systems. So signal level line um, for interface is really just an extension of an isolated transformer situation really with some type of transmission line requirements which you can see uh, in the slide would be the isolated transformer along with some form of common mode choke 
or common mode choke plus capacitor or common mode choke capacitor inductor combination built into one body. And so our SM915 series I uh, put up here for single and dual channel um, meets all those requirements uh, through you know an automotive capable uh, package. This one happens to be for SPI interface, but also for CAN bus, for example, uh, we have similar solutions. Uh, if not in one monolithic body, in a combination of either isolation transformer and then small chip-based common mode choke uh, to meet those requirements. So in summary, safety and isolation really play a large part of the design process for a BMS system. Uh, and those separation requirements between low and high voltage can be implemented different ways, but typically for the purpose of this presentation to say it's, it's done by the transformer to meet these uh, stringent safety standard requirements. Uh, topology selections affects what type of transformer we would be able to uh, help you find in order to meet your needs. And Borns builds really a multitude of solutions to meet performance and safety requirements, both for power level and signal level for BMS, for example. Um, along with any custom type of uh, design services you may need to meet any electrical and challenging requirements that aren't already part of our catalog system or readily available system.